iOS 18 is Apple's biggest software update ever. And it's not just me saying that. I mean, look at this tweet and that one and all of these. There are so many new features that have been added to this version, including loads of app updates and of course, Apple intelligence. So let's dive straight into iOS 18's new features and kick off with customization and the new home screen. With iOS 18, you will now be able to personalize your home screen layout by arranging apps and widgets anywhere you want on the home screen. You also have the option to make apps and widgets look totally different now, as the update lets you choose a new dark look for your home screen, or you can even tint all your apps and widgets with the same color. Now, whilst I like the look of a dark home screen, I think the tinting option is a step too far. Even though it gives the user complete control over what their home screen looks like, there is a chance that you can just absolutely ruin the look of it. And to be honest, even the examples in the demo didn't look too great either. You see, Apple has always been a company that emphasizes great design and showcases its software in a uniquely Apple way. And its home screen was always instantly recognizable. And I'm afraid that with this update, it's just starting to look and feel a lot more like Android. One great feature that Apple has added is the ability to customize the buttons at the bottom of the lock screen. So instead of having the torch and camera as the default buttons, you can add any other control center app for quick access. They're kind of like action buttons for those of us that don't have the latest iPhone. And talking of the torch, along with adjusting its brightness, it's now got this cool new feature that lets you control how wide or concentrated its beam is. Apple's also updated the control center, which now features new groups of controls for different categories. So you've got favorites, media, home, and connectivity. There are also a lot more controls that can be added to the control center, and third-party apps now have the ability to design their own widgets that can all be resized or arranged in different groups, making it even more customizable and useful. Moving on to the totally redesigned Photos app, which I think looks awesome. It organizes your library much better than the current app, and has a more modern, full-screen viewing experience that makes your photos look amazing. You've still got the familiar photos grid, but the app is a bit more simplified and now organizes your library into collections. So you have quick access to recent photos, trips, and people and pets. And you can also pin collections so you have access to photos that are most important to you. There's a new carousel view, which you can access by swiping right from the grid, that shows highlights that update each day and feature your favorite memories, and you can also filter out screenshots to view your grid without any distractions. Apple announced a whole host of new iMessage features at WWDC. Text effects add animations to your messages, letting you express yourself in a more fun, interactive way. And speaking of expressing yourself, you can now send a tap back with any emoji or sticker rather than just the default options we currently have. Another essential feature that Apple have finally added is scheduling a message to send later which is great if you need to send someone a birthday message or something else that's too important to forget. Apple have also added support for RCS messaging. So even though green bubbles aren't going anywhere, RCS will help bring typing indicators, high resolution media, and delivered and read receipts for your friends and family that don't use iMessage. And lastly, a great safety feature has been added to iMessage, which allows you to stay connected via satellite. This lets you continue to send and receive messages even when there's no Wi-Fi or cellular service. So if you're lost on a hike or in the woods, you will always be connected and able to send a message. Now, before I get to the more interesting features of iOS 18, I wanted to let you know I recently became a brand ambassador for SeatGeek, who are the sponsors of this video. And you can get $20 off your first ticket purchase with my code SHIVSTUDIO at checkout. SeatGeek is a ticket website and app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. They score each ticket from zero to 10 and color code them green or red so you know if you're getting a good or bad deal. I used them a few months ago in New York and I picked up some basketball tickets that were rated a 9.4 dark green. So I think I ended up paying half of retail price for these awesome tickets. You can check them out using the link in the description below and remember to use code SHIVSTUDIO to get $20 off your first purchase. There are seven more updates that will make your iPhone experience better than it currently is. So in no particular order, let's kick off with Mail. Mail has been updated to function more like the Gmail app. So you'll now see dedicated primary, transactions, updates, and promotions categories, which should make it easier to filter out random promotions and newsletters, and let you focus on your most important emails. 
Mail also features a new digest view that pulls together all of the relevant emails from a business, which I think is a great feature because it will group together things like newsletters and airline emails in one easy to view list. The next great update comes to Wallet. Tap to Cash is a new feature that lets you make in-person payments quickly without having to share phone numbers or bank details, and it's all made secure through Face ID. All you need to do is bring your devices together to transfer money from one person's account to another, which I can see being such a convenient feature once it's rolled out. The third new feature is locked and hidden apps. You can now protect sensitive apps and information by either locking an app and requiring Face ID to open it, or hiding it completely by moving it to a hidden apps folder that's locked in the app library. Also very importantly, information from the app won't appear in other places across the iOS system, including search and notifications, so other people don't inadvertently see your sensitive information. Moving on to Notes. Along with a few new formatting options, the Notes app now has additional capabilities like live audio transcription, which lets you record audio sessions within your note and generate live audio transcriptions, and the ability to now do math within a note. All you need to do is enter a math problem and it will be solved instantly in notes while you type. Number five, there's now a dedicated password app. There's not much of a difference compared to the passwords you currently see in settings. However, it will let you filter and sort accounts by recently created, credential type, or whether an account is in a shared group to quickly find accounts you're looking for. It also obviously syncs and works across all your Apple devices, but in addition to that, it also works with Windows too. SharePlay is the sixth new feature worth mentioning. With enhanced screen sharing capabilities, you can now draw on someone's screen so they can see what they can do on their screen or control their screen and take actions yourself. This is perfect when you're trying to teach a family member how to use a new device or if they need help with certain functions. And lastly, phone. You can now record and transcribe a live call directly on the phone app. And while this is activated, all participants will be informed that the call is being recorded for privacy reasons. Now, I feel like I've covered so many of iOS 18's new features, but at the same time, hardly scratched the surface. While I've spoken about the updates that make using your phone a marginally better experience, this video would be incomplete if I didn't talk about Apple Intelligence. Now, I will record another video that goes into all the features of Apple Intelligence at a deeper level, because Apple did spend about half of WWDC talking about it, but for now, I'll keep it fairly brief and talk about its three main features. Apple Intelligence is Apple's own version of AI, and they're branding it AI for the rest of us. It's built into the iOS 18 software and will add AI features across the platform, increasing app capabilities by introducing writing tools, image generation, and making Siri a lot smarter and useful. And it's able to do this due to two reasons. The first is its new relationship with OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, and the second is through the use of personal context because it has access to all the information on your phone whilst most importantly keeping your information totally private. So let's talk about writing tools first. Apple Intelligence has the ability to rewrite emails in three different tones, proofread and summarize lecture notes, and help you find the right words when composing a message. Basically, anywhere there's a cursor on your phone, AI can help you find the right words to make sure you communicate as clearly and correctly as possible. And importantly, this works across third-party apps too, so you're not just restricted to the Apple stock apps. I can see this being such a powerful feature for so many different people, so this is a great addition to iOS 18. Then, moving on to image creation. Now, this doesn't seem as useful as the new writing tools, but it can be helpful in some situations. Apple Intelligence will now let you generate AI images from scratch based on a description in the new image playground, and it can even base it on a person from your photos library. They also release something called Genmoji, which I actually quite like. So you can now create custom emojis by just inputting a description of what you want, and you can even pick someone from your photos and create a Genmoji that looks like them. And it will be in the same style as the current emojis. I think that's pretty cool. Then Apple also introduced ImageWand, which can help transform rough sketches in your notes app into AI generated images. Or even more impressively, Apple Intelligence can analyze the content in your notes app and create a new image for you from scratch, which is really powerful and great for students. And finally, perhaps the biggest update of Apple Intelligence comes to Siri. It's got a new design. You can now type to Siri when you don't want to speak out loud. It's got on-screen awareness and is able to take action in and across apps, which makes it so much more useful than it has been before. 
It's able to understand more natural language, so you can actually make mistakes when speaking to it. And because it now understands personal context, you can speak to it like an actual person rather than a robot. So if you request it to send the email that I drafted earlier to Tim and Craig, it knows which email I'm talking about and which app it's in. Or you can tell it to edit a picture and add it to a specific note. And because it works across different apps now, it'll be able to do that for you. It honestly looks so powerful. And for any questions you have for Siri that it can't answer, Apple's paired up with ChatGPT so that you can always get a response to your questions within iOS 18, instead of having to access different apps. This is even more powerful when you realize it's not just text that you can send to ChatGPT, but also questions about photos or documents. So you can take a picture of your garden and ask Siri what plants would look good here, and ChatGPT will give you a list of plants that you can add to decorate your garden. And ChatGPT is also integrated with writing tools, so you can create and illustrate original content from scratch. It honestly looks incredibly capable, but is it all safe? The short answer is yes. When Siri does want to send ChatGPT your information or media, it will prompt you to confirm that you're okay for your information to be shared. And in fact, all of Apple intelligence is totally private. Because it's integrated into iOS 18 through on-device processing, it's aware of your personal information without collecting your personal information, which means you don't have to worry about your data being stored or used anywhere except your phone. Apple seemed to really have thought of everything. So that wraps up my iOS 18 overview. This was a slightly longer video than my usual videos, so let me know in the comments below if you like this longer style, and if you found it useful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.